Jujutsu Kaisen has a lot of great moments. Times where the story, the characters, the powers just blend into a powerful message that resonates with readers. Gege is very good at capturing that vibe and making Jujutsu Kaisen very unique in this modern age of shonen. Today, my brothers, I wanted to share with you a series of events in the Shibuya Incident arc that truly define what Jujutsu Kaisen is and personally was a very real inspiration behind the channel you're watching right now. Jujutsu Kaisen is a series that is a true battle shonen, but Gege makes an effort for his characters to be different, to be as real as possible in the series that he's created, while also holding on to this supernatural element in a horrific world of curses and death. And there is no shortage of tragedy and horror throughout the story. Our characters are faced with impossible odds and an unfair reality. Not even to fully comprehend what's happening to them, but to just deal with the situation in front of them. It's a very common theme in JJK for Jujutsu Sorcerers to have a very hard time coping with tragedy in the series and being forced to clash with the likes of cursed spirits, cursed users, and even each other when they're led astray. Sorcerers have to be willing to put their life on the line, not only for themselves, but to protect others, even if the ones they protect don't deserve it. And to put simply, being a sorcerer is hell. It's not a question, they will witness the horrors of death and the cycle of curses, and that very cycle has caused many sorcerers to quit and even become curse users themselves. Even if the path they tread is unclear, even if there is no true just course, there is at least hope. And today we will be talking about why a sorcerer might find the work worthwhile. More specifically to see the breakdown of a sorcerer through Yuji in Shibuya. And Yuji is a curious case because of course we know Yuji is a very honest and selfless character. But one interesting thing about him is that Yuji was way too naive in Shibuya. He felt the need to use the time that he has left to give people proper deaths and save others. If there is someone he can help, he will help them. If he fails to save a person, Yuji blames himself, essentially killing his resolve slowly and making it so that Yuji questions his own right to live. So when Yuji entered Shibuya, he may have thought he was doing a good thing, like a hero even. He fought with his friends. He saved people. He killed curses, but there was always a lingering feeling inside of him that could have made him feel unsure or uneasy in the face of this much death. So when Shibuya actually hit, losing the Chozo, letting Sukuna rampage and massacre, seeing the horrible deaths of his close friends, Yuji broke. He wanted to die. But what's more interesting is that these circumstances are an incident. It's really not entirely Yuji's fault that this is happening because he wasn't prepared for this event, even when Yuji gave it his all. And in opposition to Yuji, you can say this character is an antithesis to Yuji's will. They took full advantage of Yuji's mindset and vulnerability. And this was none other than the curse Mahito. Mahito managed to kill Yuji's soul time and time again. Mahito is pure, uncensored evil, a mirror of humanity's darkest traits. His soul was stronger than Yuji's and he forced Yuji to look into that mirror. All the ugliness, all the blood, all the death right there on full display. Forcing Yuji to acknowledge the horror in front of him because Yuji did not yet understand it so Mihito showed more and more and more death, more body horror, treating humans like nothing, snuffing lives out playfully. He showed him, he gruesomely killed Nanami in front of him. He violently popped Nobra's face. Mihito transfigures humans, he transfigures children. Junpei, Nobra, Nanami showing him no one is safe. He wanted to kill Yuji's resolve and knew Yuji would never beat him until he accepted Mahito. So Yuji broke. He couldn't take it anymore. Mahito managed to kill Yuji's soul, his resolve, 
and he was going to kill Yuji for real, giving one of the most chilling dialogues in the series. The instincts of a curse versus the so-called dignity obtained by human reason. A war of truths. Mahito is Yuji and Yuji is Mahito. They parallel in an opposing spectrum of morals, but who will be left standing? This parallel is so incredible with how Gege uses Mihito. Mihito is evil because that is his nature, his instinct, and Yuji is good because that is his nature. Not to be right or wrong, but their conviction comes from the same place, like a curse you could say. And Yuji can't stop Mihito's instinct any more than he can stop saving people. And Yuji just rejected that truth, yet he needs to understand it. So Mihito showed him. The fact that Mihito is the human curse and derived from humanity is so poetic because he mirrors Yuji. He has the power to shape souls, to step on lives, to play with death, and he is fully aware of the sanctity of human life, but Mihito discredits life like nothing, and that is his instinct as a curse. But when Yuji is going to be killed by this truth, he is saved by his brother Toto. And this is the most badass, the most cheer-jerking entrance in the story because of the unconditional love and brotherhood these characters share. And Toto gives a speech that wholeheartedly defines what a sorcerer truly is. We are the exception. We are Jujutsu Sorcerers. All of our allies. Together we are Jujutsu Sorcerers. As long as we live, our friends who have passed away will not truly have been defeated. It's not about sins or punishment. The moment we become Jujutsu Sorcerers, our lives cannot be limited to such misfortunes. Looking for meaning or logic in death can at times defile the memories of those we've lost. Even so, what have you been entrusted with? You don't need to answer that right now. However, until you find your answer, never stop moving. For those of us who live as Jujutsu Sorcerers, that is the punishment we must endure. Toto has just unironically described the ethos of a Jujutsu Sorcerer. This powerful sentiment toward Yuji is the truth of what it means to walk this path. Gege is dropping gems. He could not have wrote a character more perfect than Toto. And I'll hint you guys on something. This is why I call you guys my brothers. It doesn't matter who you are, what you are. If you follow me, if you get me, you are my brothers. It's unconditional. And I'm just echoing the words of Toto, who brought Yuji back from the depths of despair. Shibuya writing was phenomenal. And I felt this was like the peak. This defined Jujutsu Sorcerers not as good or evil or right or wrong, but to keep moving forward, to find your way and what you need to do. And that's all anyone can manage. But for sorcerers, we are the exception. We must be better. And that's the hell they must endure. So to honor the ones who fell behind, we move. The battle will never end as sorcerers. And you can see that with every example of a sorcerer in the entire series and really that's that's just that's beautiful that's real toto is like my favorite character ever for that so because of toto's words and the unyielding bond that they shared in the wake of yuji's battle with mihito yuji has found meaning in his life and he keeps trudging forward on this path yuji has accepted mihito and moved past this curse with a soul beyond measure. Yuji is a vessel, a cog, to be used in the grand scheme of things to keep killing curses. And it's at this moment that Yuji's soul has surpassed Mihito and Yuji has matured as a sorcerer. These Shibuya moments really show the best of what Gege offers in terms of his writing to take this incident and have our sorcerers face this tragedy head on in a beautiful display of power, will, and resolve. Not even just for our main cast, but for the antagonists as well. Just showing the true nature of the series with everyone's goals 
and imperfections. And that just makes Jujutsu Kaisen so iconic. Thank you awesome guys for watching. This was a bit of a different video. The Yuji Toto Mihiro Shibuya dynamic is my favorite moments in the series. It's why I started the channel, it's why I go so in depth, and it's why Gege is such a goaded author. But please share you guys' favorite moments in the comments below. I'd love to hear it as well. But this has been Enemy Stand User, and I'll see you awesome guys in the next one. My brothers.